So usually this set is reserved for the fighters and not the promoters. But before we let Johnny Nelson, Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker take their seats, we thought we let these two, Eddie Hearn, David Higgins, air their views ahead of the huge heavyweight unification clash coming up on March 31st. So, guys, the press conference is out of the way. It is just us three in the room. No holding back, OK? Eddie, you first. State your case for your man. Well, I think, firstly, it's a great fight. Um, I like David Higgins and I like his team. I mean, they're a little bit quirky, you know? I think quirk is the right word. But a good businessman as well. Done a good job building it up, but quirky doesn't win elite sporting events. I mean, Eric the Eel was quirky. You know, he never won gold in the Olympics. And Eddie the Eagle, who can forget him, he was quirky as well, but he never went on to win gold. So I think this fight is all about <laughs> levels. As, as boxing is. And I think you can see that from their perception. I mean, David was very vocal, so was Joseph. And as we sort of draw nearer, it's like someone's getting knocked out in this fight. This is a great fight. We think we, you know, on our side, we don't see any other result other than an Anthony Joshua win by a knockout. I think Joseph is dangerous. And the one thing I'm really looking forward to is how he will embrace the occasion. Because he's never walked out into anything like this before. I think one of the dangers for AJ is, I think Joseph's a little bit, um, he doesn't seem that bothered, he's very laid back. So I think he's actually going to have fun. And I think that's going to make him dangerous in this fight because it's not like he's going to come all stiff and, you know, tense. I think he's going to enjoy it, he's going to come. I mean, when we did the negotiations this fight, David, who actually, I've got to tell one funny story, it's like, you won't mind this, well, but it was, was funny, wasn't it? Yes. Right, so we're in my office and I've got to say, <laughs> Like, he said that it was deliberate tactic, but it was about 95 degrees in my office. I don't know why, the radiators were Is that where you get your tan from? Yeah, It was yeah, like a no, Swedish, that's, that's, that's it was a Swedish else. sauna. It was, there. yeah. He it was said very it was, bizarre. It was. And I said, I promise this is not a ploy. But David said to me, do you mind if I take my jumper off? I went, yeah, no problem. Like, just presuming he's got a polo neck underneath. He sat there in a vest, right? And oh, we, no. we were negotiating. Like streetcar named Desire. Yeah. Like the, the white singlet. Yeah, proper, was, like... And I thought... You would have ran outside. I don't yeah. often agree with him, but that's never I, a good I wanted to see it. It was so bad, saying. you would have ran away. Yeah, they're quirky, but I felt also, lucky to get out alive. David said, when we did the... Uh, you know, we talked about the accreditation and the backstage, and mm -hmm. David said, you know, uh, Joseph likes to have a, a good dance before his fight. And I sort of said, what do you mean? He said, he likes to invite, like, all his friends in, all his old school mates, and they do, like, some kind of New Zealand or, like, tribal, if I'm right or wrong, dance. And I thought... You know, this guy, he's, he's up for this. He's going to enjoy it. And that, that's, I think, is a danger for Anthony Joshua because you almost want the other guy to fold under the pressure. And I think when we talk about mentally strong, David's been very vocally saying Anthony's not mentally strong. I have to say, I think he's one of the most mentally strong sportsmen I've ever seen. But we'll see on March the 31st, one, how good Josie Parker is, and two, how mentally strong he is. And they talk about his chin as well, not being in with the the quality of opposition as AJ has. Although, saying that, outside of Klitschko, David's got a good point, fairly similar. But I just I just feel that Anthony Joshua is another level to Joseph Parker. But that doesn't mean you can rule his guy out. Will your team fold under pressure, do you think? We've talked a lot, haven't we, in the press conference, you mentioned a lot about mental weakness and who has the edge on that. Yeah, so what's interesting is we came out highlighting what we feel is Anthony Joshua's weak chin. And there's footage around on the internet of him being flattened in various training camps and fights. Joseph Parker has never been dropped, and we, it's true, he hasn't. So Parker clearly has a better chin, that's a fact. When we started saying that, Joshua started saying really quirky things. He, you know, there's talk of um, Joseph Parker trying to demonise him. What did he mean by demonise? Parker was just stating, you know, he's getting... He's got a questionable chin. So that's pressure. That's Joshua. He's not used to pe being analysed like that. Then he said, I won't shake Joseph Parker's hand after the fight. Um, and why would you say that two months out? Then he starts saying, I want to be like Roger Federer. Can you imagine Federer saying, after Wimbledon, I won't shake my opponent's hand two months before Wimbledon? No. Signs of pressure. Anthony Joshua is already feeling the pressure right now. You saw it today at the press conference. His opening lines was def almost defending himself against the Federer statement, the chin issue. So I didn't need to say too much. I sat back a bit because Joshua said it for me. It was there for all to see. So 
it's clear to me who's mentally tougher, Joseph Parker. Who's got a better chin? Joseph Parker. And as Eddie pointed out, you watch Joseph Parker walk in the ring in those 20-something fights, he is smiling and relaxed. It's amazing. It's like his destiny. So do you, do you think he's overlooking your man? And, yes. And I think, in fact, I'm, I think they're making a mistake of overlooking Joe's... Joe has advantages over Joshua. And we, I see the pros and cons of both fighters. They seem to be speaking like only Joshua's got a chance. They haven't acknowledged any of Joe's advantages. Oh, I disagree. I, I think your man's got a chance. Well... You, look, we want you to keep believing the hype. I think, I think, <clears throat> I think, when you have two young undefeated heavyweights who are fast and can punch, and like to trade, I think everybody's got a chance in the fight. I, I just, you know, I just don't believe. I mean, when you talk about, it's easy to walk out in an arena with a couple of thousand people in there, with everybody patting you on the back, and feel relaxed and feel good. When you walk out in front of eighty thousand who want you to get knocked out. It's a very different environment. When you talk about getting hit on the chin, who's he been hit on the chin by? Huey Fury, barely, you know what I mean? He's not, not a puncher. Carlos Takam, good fighter, but not, not a puncher. Andy Ruiz, not a huge puncher. Kujanu, not really a puncher. You know, so, so what I'm saying is, <coughs> the truth is, David, is we don't know how good Joseph Parker's chin pa is. Parker's been in camp with Klitschko. But you, he's he's been powering. So, yeah, but... When you I say Parker, it's very different to being in the uh, ring of in a course. fight. When I say Parker's never been dropped, he started on the pads at age three. He would have had numerous amateur fights, training camps, and professional fights, and he literally has never been off his feet in, in 26 years, other than when he goes to bed at night to go to sleep. That's a very di big difference to Anthony Joshua because for every piece of footage of Joshua being dropped. There's another six rumours going round. Like, it's like every man in English boxing is putting their hand up, saying, hey, I dropped him too. Yeah, cool. So some might be true and some not. And don't take this as disrespect for Anthony Joshua. Joshua has advantages too. I think he's got a height and reach advantage. Does he have more power? He might have a touch more power, perhaps. Um, and he's got a home advantage. So we're acknowledging both. I think they're underestimating Joseph Parker at their peril. And I think that in the late rounds and stamina, Park has been the distance four times. And if you watch, at the end of those 12 round fights, Park is panting no more than the beginning. So he's, prove, he's got proven stamina. So he'll take Joshua into the deep water. I think he's once Joshua tired fades, in once Joshua fades, and remembering Joshua tends to square up a bit and be there to hit to a certain extent. Then he's a sitting duck, and I think Parker will stop him late in the fight. So what are AJ's other weaknesses then? What is that? Well, ment he's mentally weaker than Joseph Parker. His chin is not as good as Joseph Parker. And he doesn't have the experience in the late rounds that Joseph Parker has. And he's had a soft ride funded by um, British amateur boxing, Sky Sport and Eddie Hearn. Parker, in New Zealand, boxing doesn't even get government funding. There are hardly any sponsors. Um, when Joe turned pro, he didn't have an Olympic gold. There's no one fawning over him. He scrapped his way up and um, hustled his way up from the bottom, as did we, and that makes us tougher. Because you know now, when, you know when Anthony Joshua was uh, in a gang or whoever he was hanging around with, and, and went down the wrong path, and you know probably lived in places he didn't want to live in, and you know got arrested. And do you think he had to hustle his way to oh. to ABA Championship, to World Championship silver, to Olympic gold medal, to British champion? to world champion, to unified world champion. Of course he did. Did you watch the Klitschko fight? Well, I'll answer your question. No, but did you watch Of the course Klitschko? he had to hustle, but it's got softer and easier for him lately with the big did machine PR machine. Did you watch PR the Klitschko fight? Here. That weren't easy. Yeah, no, it did. And if you know, you're he softened, you don't come through the Klitschko fight like that. There Credit is so to much him. dog, which what I call for dog in Anthony Joshua. Like, and I yeah. believe there's plenty of dog in Joseph Parker. Credit and that's to why I think it's going to be AJ a great for fight. getting up against Klitschko. But did you see the shots he got Klitschko he took in that at the fight? right time? Over forty. But did you see the shots he took in that fight? A year out of the ring, Parker won't let him get up. Parker will finish it off. Do you think Parker hits harder than Klitschko? I think that Parker. I think every weight, every heavyweight can knock out another heavyweight. So again, especially the no. in those late rounds, he doesn't. Hit I don't, I don't know. They he both doesn't. hit hard. He doesn't. They he both doesn't. got numerous knockouts. Yeah. He's faster than Klitschko, I he, think, but he doesn't. He's faster than AJ. I'm not sure about that. David, you look Eddie in the eye and you tell him how you win this fight, how your team wins this fight. Oh, simple. Um, 
Joshua's made for Joseph Parker. We've been wanting to fight Joshua for three years because guys like Huey Fury, with respect, have a very tricky style for Joseph. But Joshua squares up and he's there, you know. And so for us, we're excited. And if they're trading and they'll trade, it's going to be an exciting fight. Who has the better chin? Joseph Parker. So I reckon there'll be some knockdowns. I reckon Joshua's going to go down first. And later in the fight, Joseph Parker will, will knock him out. Eddie, you do the same. I don't think he believes it. I don't Look think, him in the eye. I don't, think, the eye. I don't think you believe it, David. I don't think your team... No, you don't. You don't. Because you start off doing your press conferences and you say, he's got a glass... And the, and, but really, now it draws closer, as we saw at the press conference, you don't really... And Joseph says, Joseph gave it away. Someone is getting knocked out in this fight. He doesn't believe there's only one winner in this fight. I can promise you from his father, who took him in the pads at three to the whole camp... The pads at we, three are irrelevant. We believe we're going to knock out Anthony Joshua and unify the division. But you also... You really believe that your man's going to get knocked out. Absolutely Deep not. Deep down, you do. No. You do. He's got a granite chin. He doesn't he, He's matter. never no, been dropped. He hasn't got a granite Your man's been dropped many times. A couple of times. Mainly, You've, mainly under the First time Eddie Hearn's acknowledged what? That, that he's, he's been, been dropped. dropped. Oh, no, don't be dumb. Oh, okay, yeah. how many no, times? Listen, 90,000 people times? saw it at Wembley. How I was many, there, I remember. How many I've no, still no, got the, the underpants to In the to training, it. how many times are you aware of him actually being dropped in training camps? Once. Etc.? By who? David Price. Okay, is it true, because you hear about Daniel Dubois... Mm. You hear but about you keep talking about this, this Dillian footage, White as an amateur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dillian course, White yeah. put him down as an amateur. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so there's another one that. So there are more that haven't been. No, that, that's about. that's on YouTube. Yeah, you can watch that. Yeah. It's no secret, but, but he pe gets up. People, um, exactly. People could also argue that he got up from that and, and look look at the outcome. Parker has he really been tested like that? But you're, well, what, what you're basing your hopes on is that anti Joshua, who weren't even really training, once got dropped by 19 stone guy who can really punch, got back up and carried on. So I wouldn't base it on that. I would base it more on what we've seen so far. And I think when people... One thing I will say about this, I don't agree with the odds in this fight because they every fight they just seem to just presume Anthony Joshua is going to stroll through this test. It's because all the money pours in on Joshua. Yeah, but I, but I think that Joseph... I think, I, think, I think this is the toughest fight Joshua's had so far. I do, and that includes the Klitschko fight because of the mentality and the style of Joseph Parker. So when David says they're overlooking us, trust me, we're not. We can't afford to lose this fight. The only thing that matters to Anthony Joshua is being undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, and to do that, he must beat Joseph Parker. So, big question. What's the forfeit for you guys? Who buys the first beer? <laughs> Who is going to buy the first beer? There's plenty more on the line than that. If he wins, he represents the biggest star in world boxing. True. Mm, or even world sport. So there's a lot on the line. I mean, this event could be watched by a billion people. It's in a stadium of 80,000. The biggest stadium in New Zealand is half the size. So this is a global event. It happens maybe once every generation, a heavyweight intercontinental unification. Um, the winner will be as close as it gets to becoming like the previous Lennox Lewis, I think, was the last mm -hmm. undisputed champion. And credit to both guys, they're both stepping up to try and achieve that goal. And some champions, like Joshua, might put money first and milk voluntary defences. And to their credit, they've stepped up. So we respect Anthony Joshua. We respect his Olympic gold medal win. We respect his 20 unbeaten fights as champion. But we think he's not properly tested, overhyped, and is underestimating Joseph Parker at his peril and will get knocked out on March 31. It's been a pleasure. Dare I ask you for a handshake, guys? Absolutely. First and many. Good luck.